Hey, welcome to This Woman Can. I am your host, Janice Sutherland, career strategist for women of colour over the age of 40. Now, one of the biggest questions raised in my recent masterclass was, how do I figure out what I'm good at, Janice? And there's lots of things here because maybe you're trying to identify your transferable skills. Uh, Maybe you're wishing you knew what your strengths were. Or you could even be figuring out what you're ultimately passionate about or wondering, what am I good at? What am I good at? You want answers. We all want answers. And you want these answers so you can feel ready to tackle your career transition but you are really stalled and focusing on these on these actual aspects. And these points could actually be the ones that are keeping you in your stuckness. Yes, it's a word, stuckness. Um, they're all great pointers and feel like they should be something you can easily answer. But then we're second guessing, why isn't this the case? Using skills as the starting point for your career search can be a little bit precarious. Because as logical as it may seem, centering your career search on your skill set can lead to you limiting your options and ultimately impeding your progress. Now, it sounds like gobbledygook. Janice, what do you mean? Let Let me tell you why I think that way. The first thing is that your skills aren't visibly, are clearly visible. When you self-review, when you critique yourself and your skill set, you're only seeing your skill set from your point of view. And when I work with clients, when I work with women, I give them the opportunity to find out how the people in their lives honestly see them and what they most value them for. And it can seem pretty daunting to ask those questions, but the majority of time, Um, they're actually amazed by what people think of them. And we great reason because, you see, we're not that great at seeing ourselves clearly. And our self-perception is clouded by an absolute multitude of factors, including self-doubt, years of maybe faking it till we make it, and over-familiarity with who we are. So if you're struggling to get a handle on what you're good at, you're not alone. And there are a couple of reasons why it can feel why it can feel so tough and why it can feel so tough to do that. First, there's a great self-contradiction in trying to identify your own skills. The things you're usually best at, that you're good at, are what comes naturally to you. Um, and they are often the, mo- the most things that are likely to be the hardest for you to see as you don't think they're that special because they come second nature, you do it all the time. So how can they be actually special? Secondly, our survival instincts, that natural survival instincts means that we're really adept at adjusting to our surroundings, including the environments we work with or we work in. And especially when we're unhappy in our roles because it keeps us safe, it keeps us there, it keeps us, protects us. And you've built up a skill set that you're proficient at regardless of whether those skills play to your natural talents. And when you've spent all those years adapting to a career that doesn't really suit you, there's a good chance, a great chance that you've lost touch with who you really are and your skill sets. You can easily regurgitate the skill sets you use in your current job, but what about the skills you may have beyond those? Um, what about the skills you don't you, you don't re- recognize you have? You've no idea who what they are, and even if you did, you haven't used them maybe in such a long time that you've lost f- faith in their effectiveness. The second thing about skill about, about looking at skills and asking those questions, you don't look widely enough. You really don't look widely enough. Traditionally, the world of work operates in a linear fashion, and we have it comes in a little bit of an equation: past plus experience, plus skills, equals the industries and roles you'll be accepted into. That's the equation. But the problem is that, is that as someone looking to change careers, you're not following that linear path. We know we don't. Uh, you wouldn't be considering a change if your current work progression, what you were doing, was appealing. So it kind of, it's kind of a moot point, doesn't really work. And when you take that linear career view, it means up you. It means you end up filtering and limiting the careers 
you'd consider based on what your CV, your resume says, what it says, it's written down, and you're unlikely to give, and it's unlikely to give you the best range of options to choose from when you look at all the skills you have in totality. Number three, you might overlook something you could get good at. And assuming you do broaden your search, if your mindset is stuck on the question, what am I good at? You're likely to disregard options that you don't even have experience in yet, but you could get good at if you actually tried it. So you want to try something new. And the scary thing is that you may not even realize that you're limiting these options. Just because you developed one set of skills doesn't mean that they're the ones that you're going to be capable of forever and ever. You know, that doesn't mean that. Because the good news is you can develop new skills. We can do that. That's why we go and take additional education. We can try do more training, more skill set. We upskill. So how really, how should you look at the process? How should you rethink the process? There's probably a time you've taught yourself already out of so many career options thinking, I could never do that. I can't do that. I've never done it before. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't be good at it anyway. You know, you've probably done that a myriad of times. And yeah, these assumptions may be true. Maybe you wouldn't any good at it. But guess what? Shh. Maybe you would. Maybe you would be good at it. So don't shut that down. So here's what to do instead. First of all, ignore your past temporarily. Temporarily, I know it goes against the grain, but the best thing you can do at the start of your career change is to be open to as many possibilities as possible. Delimit, yes, another word, delimit what you currently think about your existing skill set. Unlearn what you think about it. Practice considering that everything, absolutely everything is a possibility until you've proven to yourself that it's not. Don't focus on what's in your past. Focus on what's out there in the world, what's presenting itself, what opportunities are out there. You know, find out about things you've never heard of before. Engage that curiosity and broaden your worldview wherever you can. Because if you can define what you do next by what you've always done, You'll always get what you've always got. So you're no different. You're not moved any further forward. Next, I want you to trust that gut. Trust your spidey senses. Because once you've got into the habit of finding out what you're, what, what's out there, filter-free, you can start to apply some filters to your explorations. And the first set of filter your career options should pass through is this question. Does this excite me? Does it make me feel good? Does it make me tingle? Does it make me want to do something more, find out more about it? Are you motivated by it? Is it engaging? Does it spark your curiosity? If the answer is yes, then and only then should you look at whether you're good at it or, remember, could be good at it. Because not only will you be starting from a much stronger foundation, you're also far more likely to stay the course with any retraining you may have to do or any development of new skills if you're doing it in pursuit of something that really inspires you, that makes you feel really excited, that makes you feel like you really want to do this. And once you've found some areas that you're excited about, start talking to people in, you know, who may be in the industry, who's doing the job or, you know, explore it to find out what the real skill requirements are. Because they're not always what they seem to be. We put them down on paper. When you get to the job, they're actually different. Yes, you may need a formal qualification. You're going to be a doctor or something like that. Or you may find out there are ways you can learn the required skills on your own. And starting to learn what you need to do in small ways on your own is a really fabulous way of ascertaining whether or not it's natural in your skill set, in your natural skill set. Because not only will you be beginning to get a sense of where your natural talents lie, you'll also be building up experience that you can point to later when you're speaking to potential employers or clients. So explore, be open to it. Number three, the last one, last one here. Take a 360 degree look at yourself. And I'm talking about this. 
Our non-work activities are often overlooked as tangible, important skill sets. But when you're thinking about making a major career change or a major career, career pivot, where your official skills may not be explicitly transferable, you want to look at your abilities outside the workplace because they are just as relevant. Believe it or not, you will have built up skills that aren't currently listed on your resume or your CV. There are capabilities that you don't consider to be relevant. Yeah, we've you discounted them because they're not listed under your job description. Uh, talents that you won't include in your thinking because in your mind, they're not real skills or they're irrelevant in the workplace. But you want to bring them all into the mix. You may need to learn how to showcase them in a new way. Granted, you may have to do that, but they still count. And keep in mind also that the more obvious and irrelevant your skills and abilities seem, the more likely they are to be real gold mines because, you know, they're out there. There's something to be explore, explored. Get external perspective on what you're uniquely talented at. Ask people, not just from the people who know you or in a work context, because you may be really surprised by what you discover. The thought of starting to look for your next career without placing your skills front and centre might feel a little unsettling or even illogical. I mean, yeah, come on, why are we doing this? Because it's an approach that probably reverses everything you've learned about the way the world of work fun functions. So I'm asking you to unlearn everything you've been learning. But we're not saying, or I'm not saying that your skills don't count. I'm not saying that. Nor, nor that you shouldn't consider them at all in your search for what your next role or what's been more fulfilling for you in your next job. Because what you're good at matters. The abilities you've really worked hard to develop and those that you seem to have been born with all really matter. The key to all of this is to recognise the potential limitations of using your skills as a starting point and just thinking that's all you can do and that you know you're not good to do anything else and using them as a first field for the careers you're willing to consider, basically shutting down your options before you've even started. You've almost certainly got more options for your future than you really, really think. So what happens when you start thinking beyond what I'm good at? You know, let me know, drop me a line, let me know um, what happens when you start changing the way you think. As always, you can always connect with me, connect with me on all the normal socials. Um, LinkedIn, I am Janice Sutherland. Facebook and Instagram, the same thing. If you want to learn more hints and tips, um, you want to follow me because I've got some exciting programs coming up that you will really want to be part of when it comes to changing careers over 40. You can't afford to miss it. So until next time, as ever, like I said, if I can, you can, this woman can. Take care until next time.